I'm CK. Today we've got another relatively inexpensive solder station. This one cost $39 US on Amazon. It's from 2Auto. It's their soldering station, making simple with the tool rest. We'll take a look at what we get in the box, set it up, see how it solders, and I hope you enjoy the video. The box. What I said on the other side, it's, uh, this is a DS90BU. I don't know what the differences are. It's 110, 90 watts. Use it from 0 to 40 degrees C. Lead-free soldering iron, though I won't be using lead-free made in China. Let's see what we got inside here. We've got, ooh, six-month warranty. Well, that's okay. Little user manual with a picture some foam. Put that over here and my garbage can's in the wrong place again. Let me go get it. Let's see what we've got. We've got this which is a banana clip with a uh, alligator clip on the other end. I don't know what that's for. Here's the soldering. Uh, let me take the whole thing out because I don't think there's a whole bunch else in here. Got a solder sucker. See how it pulls a vacuum. Oh, pulls a vacuum just fine. Probably not going to be my favorite one, but it's something. Here is, oh, I know what this is. Got two things in here. We've got little sponge, which I'm not going to expand because that's a special time. We all know that's a special time. This looks like it doesn't screw in. It just sets in there. Let me grab a roll of solder. If I have one open that's not locked up yet, one second, maybe a camera skip. I'm back. I grabbed some thick solder. This is uh, 0 0.062, which is thicker than I ever use for anything. But, we're just doing it for demonstration. Getting it on here. There we go. And it pulls out. Like you would expect. Nothing particular start, particularly startling there. Let's take these other two bags off. And I'm going to undo the power cord twist tie. And the critical thing is there, did they do it the right direction? And they did. Sometimes people twist the ties backwards and it drives me frantic. So that's the solder station. We've got some junky lead-free solder, even though it's pretty thin. 0.8 millimeter, that's pretty thin. That's nice enough for that. I may try that pair of tweezers. Again, they're, as I've seen before, they're coated in black material, but they are not labeled as ESD safe. Got five more soldering tips. The standard assortment, some chisels, a very fine point, and some other things. I just stick with what I've got right now on there. And we'll take this apart. Again, another twist tie to take off. Get the box ready for recycling. Now we'll plug this fine fella in. And we've got here, we've got a copper tip cleaner and lost my hat. Temperature rheostat potentiometer with a lock button, which is good. And I'm going to go ahead and turn the, oh, let me see if how easy this is and how well the tips fit. Yeah, it's a little loose, but not as bad as some. And there's the ceramic heating core. Put that back on. Now, I, and of course the sponge goes right here, and the rest is fine. This does say that the iron itself, let me zoom in a little bit more. 
The iron itself is ESD safe. Turn the power on. It's got a uh, dual digital display, top and Fahrenheit, bottom in centigrade, which is nice. And we're going up to something. You got to, I guess you kind of got to have to guess. So that's 672, which is actually very close to what I usually use. I use uh, 675 Fahrenheit. Now I'm going to hit lock. And we do have a lock indicator on the display. And the rheostat does nothing. Let's see what happens when we take the lock off if it jumps to that position. And it does. Oh man, it jumped immediately. Oh no, it's telling me what the target is. So this tells me what the target is too. Let's go to 716. And now it's climbing back up again. I heard a relay click inside for a minute. So we'll go back to 675 or so. Now the important part, let's grab something to solder. And this has got one lead that I haven't soldered yet, so I'm going to get a smaller piece of solder. I'm not going to use, oh, by the way, this goes, this can screw in there, though, hold on, I tossed the box away, of course, but let me double check because, huh, I do not see any screws to put that on with didn't come with screws. You have to find your own machine screws to go in there. Uh, I'll take a look at that in a little bit after I solder something. So I'm going to move that back. Hopefully it's in the range of the other camera. But we'll move over here and we'll do a little soldering. First I'll tin the tip a little bit. Ooh, it's very hot. That solder's just fine. Now I'm going to do my critical test for these kinds of things and see if the soldering pencil pen is, or cable is, high temperature silicon and won't melt when I rub the soldering iron tip against it. Oh, it's not. It's regular polyvinyl, so it does melt. So when you're using this, you have to be really careful you don't accidentally set your soldering iron on the cable and that can happen uh, when you're doing something fast or checking something and you set it down that would be bad because it'll burn through or melt through to the inner core wires so be careful about that that's a slight down check on this now what i'm going to do is i'm going to go grab some machine screws and see let me get a look in here is it probably metric let me see what i can do i'm going to turn this Oh, by the way, let me just try the solder cleaner. Ooh, that's stiff, but it works okay. And then there's a holder here, row of holes to put your other soldering tips on. But I'm going to turn this off again. And let's see, let's try an M3 first. Because that feels like this, what this might be. Wow, it's deep, isn't it? Get a bigger M3 out. Wow. What the heck, guys? How deep is that? How deep is that hole? I don't have any screws long enough. Let me get a... See if my depth gauge will fit in there. No, my depth gauge is too thick to fit in there. So what I'll do is I'll take some solder and go in here. See where it stops? It doesn't stop. What the heck? Maybe you want self-tapping screws in there. Well, that would be not great because you're going into plastic. But I'm not even going to try then because basically if they're self-tapping, then it's going to work for anything. Uh, you can, I mean, almost anything. You can figure it out. And then we've got a, oh, I see. So this cable here, which I'm not going to undo, allows you to plug in the back and connect the alligator clip to the piece you may be working on uh, to ground it 
or to a ground on your workstation. So that's it. It's certainly serviceable. The heat control seems very easy to use. The lock is nice so you don't accidentally bump anything. It's reasonably light. I don't like the fact that these are self-tapping screws uh, and I also don't like the fact that they don't give you any because that's kind of defeats the purpose. You can set this over next to it but it's going to be all it'll rock over and so on. Actually it didn't, did it? It stayed very stable. Uh, but I would like, it does have holes in the bottom so you can put, oops, and the ah, sorry I tilted it and the little end cap came off. Huh. If I were going to use this full time I'd probably glue those in place. But that's it. Uh, it's the two auto soldering station for 39 bucks US. It's not bad. It's not great. Uh, you can probably, if you look at other soldering stations I've looked at, you can probably find something you might like better for a little less. I'll leave a link to the playlist, I think, if I can figure out how to do that, uh, in the description so you can look at the nine other units I've looked at. And I hope you enjoyed the video.